Good morning, folks. Today we've got to focus on catastrophe, the micronova, the magnetic reversal of Earth. We also had the Mercury transit yesterday. From Earth's perspective, Mercury passed directly in front of the solar sphere, a rare and interesting but aesthetic wonder only. Today we'll also see the tree mystery continuing to grow. We've got weather alerts and we start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. Mercury transit visible here too. But of more practical importance is the coronal hole. It's finally now going to cross center heliographic longitudes, magnetically connect with the Earth, and deliver solar wind in about three or four days. Right now, solar wind is calm, plasma speed stabilized in purple, as well as the solar wind magnetic field up top in blue. These signal the end of a very minor coronal hole stream today and the continued quiet on the KP index. We will need to have our eyes on the eastern limb as that is a brand new baby active region coming in to say hello. Let's go to the earthquakes next, because while we took a six-pointer aftershock in Tonga, and we had a significant earthquake strike Hawaii, the top quake for relevance yesterday struck France, slightly smaller but still able to cause minor damage and injure four people. Just to the east and southeast, the storms are ramping up, this is the same system we showed yesterday, now readying to pound the eastern states in the continent. Also want to mention that the rain will begin in the Philippines today and that typhoon is going to dance on the coastline for at least two days. Eyes open there. Quick look at the August through October U.S. climate. I wanted to pull the three-month chart to see that the record heat from the end of summer got washed away in the charts by the frigid October. And all as it's happening again now. Temperatures in general are not supposed to be above average here for days and days. Record cold is here, and it is spreading. So what is up with the tree science? First, it was this piece on how deforestation isn't such a problem, and now we find out trees are big-time polluters. The amount of nitrous coming out of these boreal giants utterly stunned the scientists who now have to consider the overall equation for trees when you look beyond just the carbon. Up next, we shift into disaster mode with first, a confirmation of that other way to get a nova, plasma turbulence. Regardless of the science on white dwarfs and black holes used here, the math and mechanism for getting a star to go boom with an electromagnetic instability is every bit as legit as the dusty and gaseous dump into the corona is like covering an exhaust vent. This is what we believe happens on the sun. We've got tons of evidence for its ultra-rare punctuation of long eras of stability. And one more piece of evidence in that realm is the recognition that solar flare events likely couldn't produce the carbon signatures that are supposed to be from past super flares. Charlemagne, for one. They are saying you need something more powerful, like a magnetar burst or a nova event. Nobody here is going to disagree with them on that. Just maybe which star did the doing. Up next, I know, how's he going to go from imaginary spaceships back to the catastrophe, right? Well, you've heard about ships using solar light sails. How about electric sails? This is an idea our community has been screaming about since the solar light sail thing came out. Why not just use the vastly more powerful solar wind? Here we see that being advocated by two Harvard professors and one of them, veterans will recognize as the man with whom we had a science fight about catastrophism earlier this year. Manasvi Lingam. He put out a paper this spring saying magnetic reversals couldn't cause extinctions, and we went off on a 12-minute deconstruction of the argument, demonstration that they are extinction events. Lingam refused to comment, and the American Astronomical Society was uneasy about publishing our comments, and then they weren't needed anymore. Have a look. Hey folks, a little deeper look at the top story in Observer World since earlier this year when the government was forced to update the world magnetic model due to changes in the field exceeding their expectations. An international collaboration in the world's number one geophysical journal directly counters the points made in another recent paper in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. That paper had suggested that magnetic events on Earth were not linked to extinction events, and this paper now expressly indicates that the magnetic events at 115,000 years ago, 41,000 years ago, and at the Younger Dryas were in fact linked with the extinction scene at that time. This paper is a trumping card for a few reasons. First, and of lesser importance, is that we can throw anything we want at Harvard and the American Astronomical Society, including other peer-reviewed papers and 
proper science, and it just doesn't matter in some ways, because it's us. Not like when actual tenured professors and leaders of the field say it. But they didn't just say it anywhere. The journal Reviews of Geophysics is by far the number one geophysics journal in the world. Its papers are cited four times more than their closest competitor, and they publish very, very selectively on topics of the utmost importance. When a paper comes out there, it is critical and it is relatively definitive. Lastly, and of the utmost importance, the original paper studied only UV radiation changes to Earth's surface in a magnetic event a point we found academically offensive due to the importance of cosmic rays, the climate changes that would result, and much, much more. But this new paper went right for the throat. In academia, they sometimes do not directly call out another paper or an author, but they make it so blatantly obvious what is being addressed that everyone knows it. This paper also ignores everything except UV, allowing the original work to play devil's advocate against it, call the shots, and still, against that challenge, it showed the extinction potential of a magnetic change on Earth. And not just the full magnetic reversals, but the major excursions as well. Of course, we are in one at the moment. We've been in it for more than a hundred years, and the acceleration recently brought the shift to within decades of similar conditions to those described in the paper. I would not expect to see this story all put together on CNN or MSNBC, but the writing is on the wall. Or... In the journal, I suppose. The one recent paper from Dr. Lingham at Harvard never addressed any of the actual time correlations of these magnetic events and extinctions. They just selected a narrow range of change and then applied that conclusion broadly over the entire process. We believe we showed that the selectivity excluded critical aspects of the equation, but this new paper has shown that even that selective analysis fails the repeatability test. Combine those, the history of the literature and the fact that whether or not we know why it is so bad, the fact of the matter is that the magnetic events and extinctions do come together in history. So, in the wake of our winning the science fight with Harvard, and here just one month before the world's next magnetic model is set to be released, we are going to come back to a concept of Earth magnetism that we really haven't touched on since the Cosmic Disaster movie. When we remove the large-scale flows and the pattern displays, and we dig into the location-based readings, we find the strongest returns time and time again where the new poles are going to be. If you are familiar, this is striking your eyes like daggers at the moment, and if not, it's really time to watch that movie. Cosmic Disaster details the past events of catastrophe, the evidence that the sun and the earth's magnetic field act as the sword and the hand bringing the disaster, the evidence that the CIA covered this up for half a century, and the evidence that the next one is already underway and getting worse. Tick tock. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.